What's up Street Talks, the Eric and Vinay Street Photography Blog. So I just wanted to give you 18 street photography tips. This is essentially advice I would give myself if I started street photography all over again today. So the first tip I would give myself is regarding equipment. So I would recommend myself to just buy the Ricoh GR version 2. It's about 600 bucks. And I would tell myself not to get caught up in DSLRs, Leica, and all this other hype for all these different cameras. Or honestly, just shooting on my iPhone or smartphone, whatever it may be, because having the simplest camera possible is the best for street photography because the less you have to worry about your settings, the less you have to worry about your camera, the more you can focus on photographing with your soul. In regards to technical settings, I'd recommend myself to just shoot in P program mode. That means the aperture and shutter speed are automatically adjusted, center point autofocus, ISO 1600, to essentially just set it and forget it. Because no one cares about what kind of technical settings you use to shoot street photography, as long as you catch the emotion, the soul, and the moment. Regarding software, I'll tell myself to just use Adobe Lightroom because it's probably the fastest, most robust, best piece of software out there for any photographer out there. If not, to just shoot RAW plus JPEG, and if the JPEG images look good enough, to just stick with the, the JPEG images, to just use um, Apple's Photos or any other default app. But when it comes to software, to keep it simple, to know some of the few hotkeys and short key, uh, shortcuts, to use 90% of Photoshop's abilities with only 10% of the functions. In regards to post-processing, I'd remind myself that post-processing is like seasoning food. A little bit of salt and pepper makes a great steak taste even better, but pouring on way too many seasonings and spices is going to ruin your food. Same thing with, with photography is, if you have a good photo, you don't need to post-process it much. If you have a shitty photo, no matter how much you polish it, it's still not going to be great. And I know this from personal experience. So for me to just import my photos to, into Lightroom, use the simple free AirKim presets, the AirKim Monochrome 1600 preset, optimized for the Ricoh GR version 2, or downloading a free version of SilverFX Pro 2 or the Google NIC software to post-process and to keep the looks consistent like film. Film versus digital. I tell myself, yes, learn how to shoot film because it's gonna help you appreciate digital photography more. But then today, it doesn't really matter whether you're shooting digital or film as long as you're capturing images with soul and meaning and purpose. Overcoming the fear of shooting street photography. So when I started shooting street photography, it was very much on Ricardo Yipasson, look for the nice background, wait for somebody to enter. I would tell myself to, enter, to do the five yes, five no challenge in street photography, to approach a bunch of strangers, get five people to say yes, get five people to say no, because one of the biggest ways to build your confidence in street photography is to actually talk to people and to build your personal confidence level. In regards to composition, I would tell myself not to just look at the, the work of the great street photographers from the past, but to also study the work of the Renaissance painters, to study the work of architects, to study any sort of art to fulfill your creative personal vision and uh, composition, to also not spend too much time cropping my photos, to not crop my photos, to know that I have to make good compositions from inside the camera. Inspiration. To know that inspiration is going to wax and wane, but the best way to be inspired is to actually just go out and shoot. In regards to social media, I would tell myself to not, to not get caught up in the hype of social media that it is a nice vehicle to get your photos out there, but to use the analogy of a tree, social media are like the branches, which obviously give you nutrition, but to create your own blog, your own website is like the trunk of your tree. So to use wordpress.org, to register on bluehost.com, to register your own website, your own blog, so you have more creative freedom. In terms of feedback, before sharing your photos with anybody else, looking at your own photos and asking yourself, do I like my own photographs? In terms of travel and street photography, to know that your backyard is the best place to shoot street photography and that you don't need to live anywhere super fancy to make great street photographs and moving to Paris is not gonna make you the next Henri cartier Besson. In terms of personal photography, my advice would be, know that street photography is not the most important thing. What's far more important is to love your, your loved ones and to make your photos more personal, to always think about death and to photograph your loved ones like it's like the last time you're gonna see them. Take them to the next level. In terms of becoming a better street photographer isn't to add more layers, to add more complex compositions, but to make it even simpler, to strip it down 
to the bare minimum, to strip the superfluous, to keep focusing on the small emotional details which make your photos have more soul. Natural photography. I also remind myself that as a street photographer, to not forget to photograph nature, that nature is the ultimate place for all inspiration. Sharing my experiences. So I would continue to tell myself to keep blogging, to keep sharing things, to share my personal experiences, and even though I don't know much about street photography, helping others find their own personal talents and their own personal vision in street photography. On haters, to essentially know that when you're pursuing your life's passion, there's always going to be people who step in front of you and they don't like you pursuing your life passion. And to not hold anything against them, to still love them, to treat them with kindness, love, patience, to always remember what your mom stay, said, is to, to stay humble and to know that the more haters you, ha you have, the more sign of success it is. Empowering others. That at the end of the day, photography is not the most important thing, and street photography is just another tool in your life's toolbox to build your personal confidence in life, to take risks, and to live a more epic, noble life. To know that street photography's best purpose is to make us better human beings. And last thing is memento mori. So, memento, remember, mori, death. Remember that you will die and you must die. And whenever you take a photograph, it's a meditation on death. Fleeting moments fleeting encounters. Your life on earth is very short. Make photos which are personally meaningful to you and don't care about what others think about your work. Conclusion, know that don't call yourself a street photographer, don't even call yourself a photographer or an artist, whatever it may be. Just call yourself a child, a curious person in life, somebody who likes to make personal meaning out of photography. And I think street photography is one of the best ways to find this. So I hope these 18 tips help you get some personal direction in your street photography. And know that ultimately at the end of the day, don't make photos, make personal meaning. Thank you guys for watching and uh, peace out.